Hello friends, I'd like to welcome you to the Holly Lolly channel. You know, we have quite an interesting topic with you today. The things that are done in Japan are totally different from the rest of the world. And the first one is Valentine's Day and White Day. In Japan, on February 14th, only women give men chocolate. It's believed to be a way of expressing their feelings, love, respect, or just good friendship. Chocolate on this day is even divided into subspecies. Obligatory chocolate is given to colleagues, friends or bosses to express friendship, gratitude, loyalty, but not romantic feelings. Real chocolate is only given to those for whom women have romantic feelings. This could be a boyfriend or husband. Friendly chocolate is given to friends usually between girls. And there is also more homemade chocolate. Many women prefer to make it with their own hands to express more sincere, deep feelings and show that in this gift I put my soul and a part of myself. And exactly one month later on March 14th, men respond to those gifts that they received on Valentine's Day. Thus, they give usually sweets and other gifts. It can be white chocolate, marshmallows, different cookies and other sweets. Hence the name White Day. And the most interesting thing is that the gift that men give on March 14th, it should be three times more expensive than the one they received on February 14th. What do you think? It really surprised me when I found out about it. I'm interested in your opinion. Post it in the comments. You know, since we are talking about holidays, I would like to note that in Japan, in principle, many holidays are celebrated in a different way than we are used to. Take New Year's Eve, for example. New Year's Eve is celebrated very modestly here, and usually it is with family, and the traditional New Year's dish is KFC chicken. When my first New Year's Eve was in Japan, I was shocked. I thought that all over the world celebrate New Year's Eve, that there is a tree in the center of the city, fireworks, noisy, fun, but here there is no such thing. Here I have never seen fireworks on New Year's Eve, everything is very quiet, modest. There are Japanese people who, in principle, do not celebrate it, they go to bed, and do not consider it some kind of super holiday. Honestly, I was very surprised. Then I read this year on the forums that someone flew to Japan and asked where to celebrate New Year's Eve, and everyone wrote in the comments, as if do not expect such from the Japanese, that they will somehow be noisy or boisterously celebrate. Everything will go quietly, you will not even notice that New Year's Eve is somehow different from other nights. Therefore, if you decide to plan a trip for New Year's Eve, you should know that Japan is not the best place to celebrate this holiday, because everything is very quiet and modest. But the Japanese have holidays that are unusual for us, which are celebrated by the whole country. That is, the whole country goes on a day off on this day and all together celebrate the holiday. For me, perhaps, the most unusual holidays are the Day of Green and the Day of the Sea. Also, every second Monday in January they celebrate Adolescence Day. Local authorities gather young people who turn 20 this year to congratulate them on their adulthood. On this day, girls wear kimonos and guys wear wide samurai pants or business suits. Unfortunately, overtime is considered the absolute norm in Japan. Here it is not accepted to express any dissatisfaction about it, and you can go home only after the bosses have left. There is even a concept of giri here a sense of obligation and duty to others. It is believed that overtime can be seen as an expression of gratitude for working in this company and also to support one's colleagues. Employees try to avoid situations where they may appear less hardworking or responsible compared to their colleagues. In Japan, sleeping in the workplace is a sign that a person is tired because he or she is working very hard. This term here is called inamiri and is not condemned, but rather encouraged by society. Studies by scientists from different countries have confirmed that a little restorative rest in the middle of the working day increases the productivity of employees. You know, very often when I ride the subway, I like to watch people, what's going on around me. And I often see that some people are sitting in their phones, just stuck. And somewhere, probably half of the subway carriage is just dozing off. Even the kids from school, who get there on their own, they're asleep too. But when they get to the station they need to get off at, they're straight out, abruptly get up, perk up, and go. If I fall asleep in the middle of the workday, take a 5 minute nap, I then don't fall asleep at night. I also work a lot, not in a Japanese company, I work remotely, but there are certain projects that need to be handed in on time, and you sit up late, work, get up again in the morning, take the kids to kindergarten and school. It's all a cycle, and I just fall asleep. But if I sleep 5 or 10 minutes during the day, I won't sleep at all at night. But I don't want to deny in any way that the Japanese don't work hard enough. No, they do work a lot. It's just that I often wonder about this when I ride the subway. How? How can they be so tired? Here he sleeps, he doesn't notice anything around him, and one second and he's up, as if he hadn't slept at all. It's gonna take me a long time to get my senses back. And that's why I'm having these thoughts in my head, thinking about it. I wonder what you're thinking. 
The next thing I wanted to tell you about is weird merchandise. Just the other day I went shopping, and specifically went to Daiso. Daiso is a store where almost everything is 110 yen, and there I saw that they sell stickers on the rear window of the car. I started to look at them and wondered what they were for. In my country I used to drive a car, but here I don't have a car, I don't have a Japanese license, so I wasn't interested in this question, but I had not seen such stickers before and I became interested. I started to look for information, and then I found out that in Japan stickers on cars are completely different from the stickers we are used to. A sign in the form of a green or yellow leaf indicates that the driver received his license less than a year ago. A four-leaf or flower sign on a car sticker indicates that an older driver is driving. A sign with a white cross on a blue background indicates a car driven by a person with a disability. You know, if we talk about Japan and what's so special here that other countries don't have, it's worth mentioning the way roadworks are done here and the traffic controllers. They have a light stick, a uniform, they regulate traffic, but I wanted to tell you about the peculiarity of how many people are involved in the process. For example, there is a repair on a roadway. It is an undeniable plus that often the repair of roads takes place at night, when in principle there are few cars on the roads, few pedestrians, and then the Japanese repair the roads quietly and very quickly, qualitatively. And an incredible number of people are involved. They also repair during the day, but not as much and often as they do at night. I repeat, a lot of people are involved in the process. Some people fall asleep, some people trim. About 20 people might be involved in the process. To repair some notch, 5 people will stand everywhere and show the cars to go around. For example, even in an underground parking lot, if there is a turn only to the left, there will still be two adjusters who show the car where it should turn, and passers-by are also told to wait. It's hilarious because they are so concerned about people's safety. It certainly can't help but inspire respect. Even when the road is blocked and it is clear that there is a dead end ahead of you and you can't pass, two or three people still stand there and tell you that you have to turn and there is no way forward. And this sometimes causes a slight smile, because there is really no other way, but they will still tell you that you have to turn around. And this is a little bit wild for us, because in our country you will never see such things, but here it causes a slight smile. Of course, Japan also stands out with its traffic lights. Instead of the usual green color on the traffic lights, it is green with a blue tint. And in general, when traffic lights first appeared in Japan, instead of green there was almost such a rich blue shade, and this is due to the peculiarities of linguistics. For a long time the Japanese used the word aoi to denote both blue and green color. And even after the introduction of the concept of midori, which means green color, the Japanese for a long time out of habit still used aoi to express both green and blue colors. Eventually, in the 70s, the Japanese government decided to use the international standard green color, but with a blue tint, when making traffic lights. The next peculiarity I wanted to tell you about is that in Japan it is absolutely not accepted to bargain, and very often there are some misunderstandings between locals and foreigners in some tourist places, markets. Foreigners, sometimes, ask for a discount and in response get misunderstanding from the Japanese. Like, what does he want from me? The Japanese don't understand it. And, of course, not because they are greedy. It's just not accepted, it's not in their culture. It's always what the price is, that's what they pay. Tipping is not necessary, as I also mentioned in many videos. And asking for a discount is not accepted here either. Of course, even now, in recent years, when many foreigners come to Japan, the locals already know that foreigners can still try to bargain. The Japanese already somehow react more gently to this, there is no such misunderstanding. But it even happens that rarely in some tourist places you can make a discount. But in principle, the bulk of people do not understand how you can even haggle. The next thing I wanted to tell you about is that the Japanese do not use perfume. Here they care a lot about the people around them, so that you do not interfere with the people around you. And in Japan it is considered indecent to use a pungent fragrance, because someone may not like it. And so that a person does not feel discomfort that the smell is unpleasant to him, the Japanese, in principle, try to neutralize any odors. There are very often air fresheners, which again do not mask the smell, but neutralize it. And perfume, if you want to buy a cool perfume here, you won't find it almost anywhere. I can't, of course, guarantee that you won't find them anywhere, maybe there are some somewhere, but it's not common here. If perfume is used, it is so subtly scented that only a person in close contact can catch it. And the same antiperspirants, they are odorless. If at once you smell a slight note of freshness, then later it will not be felt. I used to love perfume and it was a pity that you can't use it here, but now I'm used to it, I'm absolutely fine with it. 
If you're ever going to Japan, you'd better know how the gestures we're used to can be perceived here, because some of them are different from how we are used to, after all. For example, a thumbs up is not a good idea here because the older generation may perceive it as disrespectful or even a challenge. Further, if you want to call someone to you, then one index finger to do it is considered indecent. You have to use your whole hand to call a person to you. And in general, the upward pointing of the index finger is considered some kind of obscene gesture here. If you are in Japan and you want to give something to someone, some object, then in order to express a deep level of respect to this person, you should give the object with both hands. And it is also customary to accept the object with both hands to show, again, a deep level of respect. And you also need to understand about Japanese head nodding. Very often, no matter where I go in a place, when you're going to talk, it's considered impolite to just keep quiet. The Japanese always hi, 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 which means yes, yes. In general, they nod their heads and when speaking, even when on the phone, if you listen to the conversation, always the person who is listening, he will always say hi, hi, hi doesn't mean that he agrees with what you are saying. It's to show respect and that he's listening to you intently. And so there are these misunderstandings between foreigners and Japanese. For example, there was some business meeting where the Japanese always smiled at you in response, gave his head in agreement, and the next day for some reason you got a rejection. And foreigners think, how can it be so? He had already agreed to almost everything at the meeting. But here giving in means that they are listening to you attentively, but in no way that they agree with you. Friends, of course, this is far from all the peculiarities that are done one way in Japan and another way all over the world. I couldn't cover everything in the framework of one issue. But I am very curious, what peculiarities do you know? What makes Japan different from the rest of the world? Please write me in the comments. Also put a like for my efforts and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in new videos. Bye bye!